Hey guys, Pete Scardabello here. So I thought I'd take you through my new trailer track that I'm working on. Because I got to kind of an interesting place. Because what I usually do is, and I probably talked about this before, after I finish it, I mix it down into stems. Even if it's just me doing the mix. And then I bring it into the DAW. And I go from there. But with this, I actually, once I brought it in to Logic from, I started in Cubase, then I brought it into Logic. And actually, once I did that, I added some things. I added some guitars, actually some baritone guitar too, and I'll show you that. And I reinforced some things, like the snare. Um, added this low sine wave. Uh, for bass reinforcement so this is just something that you can think about when you are working on stuff you know it's never too late to to add more stuff um, yeah so let me play the track for you and then I'll uh, I'll go through what I did and we'll go through all the stems actually so anyway, let's uh, let me play the full track for you guys. Check it out. Okay, so let's just, um, we're just going to go through stem by stem here. So for this, um, I did the brass stem, string group, percussion, uh, reinforce the snare there, choir, trailer effects, that low sign for bass reinforcement that I mentioned, the wind group, piano, synth, and then the guitars that I added, baritone guitar as well. So let's start from the top here. This is the brass group. Um, so I'm not going to play all of the stem here, but I will. So if, this is interesting for this first these those big brass hits the kind of bram hits at the beginning or at the 
after the intro. So that's like uh, I think trombones and and the horde that uh, those sounds there. But what I did to make it more aggressive was I copied the track into uh, and used the head crusher, which is the uh, uh, it's like a tape emulation. So I put the drive all the way up. So that sounds like this. I also did some EQing here. I'll show you that boosted the 2k just to give it some bite there so this sounds like this so there's no you'll notice there's no bass in there because we have that in the other track so why didn't I just put head crusher on this one well on the original one because sometimes that takes the bass away so I didn't want to affect the low end so together they sound like this got that weird hollow it's bassy but it also has that sort of ominous um, it gives it that uh, sounds like it's in a tunnel or something but anyway so that's pretty effective when you hear it in the mix there I think so it gives it that extra edge there so that's what I did in there so yeah, that was something that inspired me when I was mixing. So that's that's kind of why I wanted to make this video. Alright, the next thing is just a string group. Um, and that's pretty straightforward. Except I added, I reinforced the bass here because some, for some reason this bass note got lost here. Just that one note, I don't know why it dropped out, but so that's all I did. But. Yeah, so that's pretty straightforward. And I think for strings, I use the CSS, the um, Cinematic Studio strings layered with uh, the Spitfire um, chamber strings. And at some points, I think at the end, I added uh, the Metropolis Arc octaves for this one of these. Yeah, so what kind of processing did I do on the strings? Not much, but there's some EQ. Took out some of the mid, and there was a space resonance here that I took out at 150. Um, I also compressed it a little bit, just to get it a little more um, consistent sounding. Not much, I'm not going, you'll notice it's not compressing more than one or two dB, so. So really subtle with that. You don't want to go too far with that. You want to keep some of the dynamics, of course. Okay, so moving down. This is the percussion group. So what did I do for percussion? Well, I used some uh, compression. I used the API. But pretty subtle, so nothing major. But these are the settings. But I like this compressor on percussion because it's pretty uh, has a good punch to it. Oh, it's got this thrust. So, and also I ran the com um, the percussion group to the the vintage uh, oral exciter just to give it a little more. And I'll play you the difference for that. So without it. Just brightens it up, so it helps it come through the mix. Um, and yeah, if you read about it, it's a little different than just adding EQ. Uh, it's doing some stuff harmonically. Um, then yeah, it reinforces snare. Because I had, if you listen to this, I had actually a snare type sound in the trailer effects. This is the snare by itself. Actually, this is the second part. Let me let me go forward here. 
So yeah, there's a snare. Listen to this. Uh, you can hear that. So it's so it's there, but I wanted to make it more pop out more, just to give it more energy. So check it out with the reinforcement here. Not too much, but if you listen to the, it has a little more. Um, See, it's got a lot of uh, reverb on it, so it kind of rings out more. So, see, that's without it. It's a little flatter, and I think I also put the snare through the Aphex exciter too to give it that that top end. Okay, moving on. Choir didn't really do anything to the choir. I don't think. Um, let me see if I EQ'd it at all. No, I just, I ran it to the Aphex thing, actually, which is interesting, but... Just to get it to come out more. I think, and this is the Metropolis Arc 1, I believe. So you don't want to overuse the Aphex um, Oral Exciter, but it does help to get things to pop out of the mix. So trailer effects. I actually use a limiter on it, believe it or not. And some EQ, actually no EQ, I was just looking at. But let's look at the limiting. So I'm just trying to control some of these hits, and actually I'll probably go a little less with this even. Oh, let me bring that down a little. Because you don't want to... So just to control the dynamics a little bit. It's more as a... It's not so much to... It's more just for those big hits to make sure they don't go too far there. And I did think about side chaining uh, with the low pass on, so all the lows in the other tracks, when the big hits happen, have them come down. But I decided against that because I don't always like the way that sounds. Sounds it gets that pumping effect sometimes. So anyway, so that's that one. Moving on, wind group. Really nothing to that. It only comes in at the very end. And it sounds pretty not great. <laughs> On its own, it sounds kind of weird, but when it's mixed with the strings and horns, uh, it makes more sense, I think. It just reinforces things. Because at the end of when you're doing a trailer track, you want to do that wall of sound type thing for the final act. So I think that's, that's just kind of brought it in for that. So see, it doesn't really stand out that much there, but it adds nice, nice colors. I think I just wanted that color there at the end of the woodwinds, just to, to bring everything in. Okay, then the piano group. Uh, some, I took out some of the baits because it was kind of, I'll show you at the beginning. Um, yeah, it was a little, let me just solo that. So here's without the EQ. So yeah, so I, I, I wanted to take away some of that bass there. And just have it more mid to high end there. Hear that right there? It's that kind of like low mid that I didn't like so I took some of that out um, yeah see this like low mid here which is like a 300 and then I, I high passed it too at around uh, what, 50 54 
just in case there's any like thumping in the piano you don't want that to interfere with other elements but the piano only happens at the beginning and end so I didn't obsess about it too much then we have the synth group which I don't think I did much oh, this is sort of yeah I didn't really touch that maybe some automation not even Okay, so let's get to the guitars, because this is kind of where it got interesting. Because here's why, well, at the beginning, I have this baritone guitar. Let me show you this. Because we have this effect at the beginning. And I wanted to give that more edge, but I didn't want to distort that. So I added bar distorted baritone underneath that which I think, so get, watch this, it sort of. So it gives it that edge, kind of makes it a more interesting sound than just using that sample that I had. It's Cause I have, I have a baritone guitar, which is cool. So that's a really, that's a really low A. It's like if you, the low B on a seven string, if you tune it down a whole step. Okay, so that's that. And that happens right at the end too. I bring that that hook sort of element back. That happens at the intro, it comes back at the end. So it comes full circle. So so why did I add guitars here? Because I felt like it didn't have after those big Bram hits, I kind of felt like it, the energy was dropping. So we have this. See, I kind of feel like it falls off a tiny bit, so. But actually, I want to talk about this drop here, too, because this, this, uh, this downer here. I reinforced it with this. I took that and I copied it. So it gets. So if you listen to this, I just, I um, low passed it. So it's just. And you won't be able to hear that unless you have good headphones. But I wanted to really get that downer, bring that out more. So, so that's why I did that. I cross faded it there. Anyway, just wanted to mention that. But yeah, getting back to the guitars. So yeah, I felt like... I wanted something, I wanted that edge there. Because the synths were kind of edgy. I, I mean, I have this for the synths. So it's kind of bassy. But I wanted more, I wanted like distortion. But I, So I was like, all right, let me add some guitars. So I added these. So it gives it a lot more, more edge and energy. So I get to do my like Iron Maiden impression, which pretty much is every trailer chord progression is Iron Maiden pretty much. <laughs> anyway, so let's, what's what I do on the guitar? Well, I didn't, I have an amp, but it's just, I, I got this bias. Um, I'm using the bias amp simulator now. It sounds really good. So, so I just use that. Um, on, you got a pretty good metal tone. I have a API preamp too, and it has a really good direct, like DI, so, so that helps. I did a little EQ on it. Um, I'll show you that. There was something happening at 150 that I didn't like, especially when you get to this like chugging part. Um, so I dropped that out a little bit. And I'm going to uh, plate using the little plate. Um, 0.5 second decay. 
do a little low cut here. And I use this mod button. I have no idea what that does, but I like the sound when it's on. So yeah, so I did that on both guitars. I double tracked it. I always do that in their pan right and left. So. So that helps the rhythm drive there too, I felt like, for this part. Yeah. So I'm tuned down to D, I think. Oh, uh, drop D, actually. I really like the end here with this guitar. Um, it really opens up. And I actually added a lead line. So I'll show you that. Just doubling the melody that, that the brass and the strings are doing. So let me show you just the guitars there. And actually, the baritone comes back again. Oh, and I did something cool with this. I did a reverse here into the attack. Just to give it some interest there. So that's on top of... Just kind of think it ties it all together. So anyway, yeah, that's it for the video. If you have any questions, um, let me know below. Um, I think I talked about everything. This low sign, that's just a reinforcement of the bass here. It's no big deal. Um, oh, let me, uh, actually, let me talk about one more thing is for the mix bus, I did a tiny bit of EQ. Um, had some harshness here at 1K, so I took that out, dropped a little of 500. Added some top end because a lot of times, um, I don't know for some reason the samples don't have a lot of top end, so so I added quite a bit here. Um, and then I used the uh, fab filter, but very subtle. I set the out to um, negative 0.81 dB, and I used a punchy setting, and yeah, I'm only cutting a couple db one or two db so nothing you don't want to go too far with that i don't think you want your tracks loud but you want to try to get as loud as you can before you start limiting that that's my approach anyway all right so thanks for watching we'll see you guys on the next one take care bye